Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lori Mishley. I am a researcher and a clinician here in Seattle, Washington, and my goal is to make Parkinson's disease preventable and reversible. Long story short, I was hired in 2010 by NIH to come up with better ways to study whole practice integrative medicine, things like exercise and diet that don't lend themselves very well to a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. So <clears throat> my topic was Parkinson's disease. It is a cause I've been committed to ever since. Um, my practice and research is exclusively devoted to people with Parkinson's disease. And when I started a big study in 2010, I found myself without an outcome measure. I did not have the tool that I needed to measure Parkinson's the way I needed to measure it. And so I needed to, to build that scale. So the name of the scale is the PROPD, Patient Reported Outcomes in Parkinson's Disease. And um, due to the very generous donation of a gentleman named Don Johnson and the help and assistance by Chris Adamson to get this project brought to completion, we worked with an amazing app development team to bring the Parkinson's Symptom Tracking app to you for free on Android and iOS. You will be in charge of your own data. You can choose to share it with whomever you choose to share it with. But for the first time, people with Parkinson's finally have a clinically relevant, sensitive measure of Parkinson's disease severity and progression. Um, we don't have a biomarker in Parkinson's disease. We have known about Parkinson's for over two centuries and people with prostate cancer have a PSA. People with diabetes can monitor their blood glucose and their hemoglobin A1C. People with Parkinson's do not have a biomarker. We are going about it blind. It is right now currently defensive. People go to their neurologist with these qualitative, vague, messy, fluctuating symptoms and pay providers do their best to hide them, but there is no strategy. Most doctors are not sitting down with their patients trying to get a number down to target a goal. It's not like people go to get their DAT scan and the doctor doesn't say, oh, you're 42% deficient. Come on, Bob, let's see if we can't, you know, get your dopamine transmission rate up to 65% over the next six months. That doesn't happen because that's not how a DAT scan works. DAT scans don't tell us that much. They're not that clinically relevant. Whether you have a lot of loss or a little loss does not actually tell us much about what symptoms you have or what kind of progression you will have. So even though DAT scans may be a little useful in helping with the diagnosis. They're really pretty useless in terms of predicting progression or helping guide treatment decisions, not to mention expensive, inaccessible, and inconvenient. So the question I ask all of you, how are you monitoring? I'm not Everybody has to have some tool. Parkinson's is a highly fluctuating disorder. You can be constipated some weeks and deal with anxiety other weeks and acting out your dreams other weeks and tremor another week. Um, sometimes these symptoms are hard to articulate and it's a moving target. So most of you probably can't answer which of your symptoms have been getting better most substantially over the last two years. Which of your symptoms in these last six months seem to be progressing the most or having an exacerbation? How do each of you communicate with your healthcare team about your change in symptoms over time? And I think what most of you will answer is you don't. You don't have a tool that does that. And the outcome measures that we have historically used, the HONINYAR, the UPDRS, these scales don't cut it. I'm not saying they're horrible. They have their place. They do have a place in, in research. They don't seem to have much of a place in clinic and real life practice. So in around 2010 or 11, I set out to create a currency that the community could use. The patient reported outcomes in Parkinson's disease scale on the bottom right shows you the average slope of Parkinson's progression. 
uh, on average, a typical patient has about a 550 score at diagnosis and gets worse at about 38 to 40 points per year. It doesn't seem to be a linear slope. There seems to be a little bit of a worsening in those first five years, and then it evens out a little bit before starting to slope upward again after year 10. As you can see in the top right, the higher one's pro PD score, the lower their patient reported quality of life. So it was really important to validate the scale I needed to show one, that it gets worse over time, and two, that as it gets worse, patients' quality of life goes down. Um, one thing I will say about our quote-unquote normal cohort of rate of progression is that even this cohort is um, disproportionately from the United States, white, makes more than $80,000 a year. I think more than 50% of people in the cohort made more than $50,000 a year. And it's a highly educated cohort. Um, more than half of people have higher education degrees. So, um, you know, my guess is that this rate of progression might be a little steeper if we were to expand this globally, where people have less access to everything from healthcare physicians, pharmaceutical drugs, good food, organic food, things like that. Um, the other thing I'm going to point out is, you know, you can see on average, people get about 10 good years. About year 10, that line crosses from the blue zone into the red zone, where quality of life goes from good to fair. And, and I, I want to talk about that 10 good year concept, because that's, that is what the data says is average for this group. Um, you know, back in 1970, 75, I, the average person with a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease died within eight years. So even though this rate of progression looks scary and progress and, and um, you know, intimidating, I want to make sure that you all understand this is already a huge, huge improvement over the last 50 years. Tremendous improvement over the last 50 years. And I would like to believe we are going to see an equally, if not more profound improvement in the next decade or two to come, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, we are already seeing that people in underserved communities, remote locations, um, underdeveloped nations have much, much, much higher scores than what I am used to seeing in my private practice in Seattle, Washington. That is becoming apparent already in the first month or two of the app's release. Uh, here's just a little snapshot of people who, um, where people were joining from in one week. I just thought it was really neat in the first 800 people who have registered. We already had registered users from 114 different countries. So I am blown away by the global reach. Um, and I think that has the potential to really change the conversation a little bit. Um, probably the most important score that any of you can get is the earliest, earliest, earliest on the timeline that you can get today, yesterday. Um, if you have kids, start when you're 20, at least get one score a year, just know where you stand. If nothing else, just getting your score once will one, give you a baseline that will be useful to you for the rest of your life. And two, it will be very eye-opening for most people to realize and understand what the symptoms of Parkinson's disease really are. Um, I think they, that uh, most people don't understand how complex and how expansive some of the non-motor symptoms are. And so, um, you know, you getting your baseline score doubles as an educational tool that kind of alerts you to things you might want to be on the lookout for, for yourself and your loved ones moving forward. Um, so uh, here are my scores. Um, I don't have Parkinson's disease, but I just wanted to get a sense of how long does it take to complete it? How annoying is it? How easy is it? How much do my scores bounce around? Of course, they're going to bounce around a little bit. Life happens. Um, and I think that the more often it's just data, the more data points you have, the more 
accurate and useful the data becomes. So for those of you who only want to do it a couple times a year, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's better than nothing. But others are going to really want to um, rein, get control over their numbers and see if they can't really kind of start to steer the ship in a particular direction. So um, as I already said, the average score at diagnosis is about a 550. Um, I think that there is potential to start to use this app as a screening tool for Parkinson's disease. If people in their 20s and 30s and 40s who do not have a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease download this app and get their score and they learn that they are already up above a 500, 550, 600 and higher, um, that might be enough to bring this report into their primary care provider and say, can we talk? Um, should I be concerned? I can't explain these symptoms, but a lot of them are starting to add up. And I'm wondering, could I be at increased risk of Parkinson's? Are any of these symptoms red flags or could you help me get to the bottom of it? So um, in that case, you know, if you, if your doc will work with you. It, it could be any number of things, some of which have nothing to do with Parkinson's disease, um, but there are some kind of little triads of acting out your dreams, constipation, loss of smell, that your doc may say, hey, a score of 500 plus these three symptoms, let's talk about skin testing or hopefully dog testing or um, that scan, and let's talk about ways we can either start to work you up or just dive into a preventative strategy. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the work that I've been doing, I truly do believe that we have the tools already to know how to slow Parkinson's prevention, Parkinson's progression. Um, this whole study that I've been doing, that MVP study has been really re revealing and we can tell you with tremendous confidence uh, what the people who are doing better than everybody else are doing differently. So for those people who were to find out early that they have Parkinson's disease, um, there is a ton that you can do. Okay, so as I already said, uh, the best time to do this is today. Now, uh, it takes about five minutes to register and then about five minutes to get your score and the report generates automatically. Um, you do not have to do this on any particular frequency. You can turn off the settings. You can say you don't want any alerts. Um, you do not have to do this on any regular basis whatsoever. The best thing you can do is get a score now and forget about it until you someday wonder. But I assure you that this baseline score is going to be really valuable to you someday. So um, the sooner you can get that first score locked in, the better. It is the Parkinson's symptom tracking app is free on both the App Store and Google Play for iOS and Android. Um, you can go, it is called Parkinson symptom tracking, no S on the Parkinson, just Parkinson symptom tracking. Um, the company that is bringing this to you is called the Parkinson Center for Pragmatic Research. It's a research center that um, I launched to bring more attention and funding to uh, pragmatic studies, studies that immediately help patients. So when you go to the app store, search under Parkinson's symptom tracking and go ahead and download that app. Um, before you can get a score, you have to log in. Um, first thing to do is go to that bottom section that says create an account. And so as soon as you create an account, it'll open up to a page that looks like this. Like I said, it takes a couple minutes for those of you who have visual issues or mobility issues or technologically challenged. Um, don't be shy about asking a friend to help you with it. Um, but you enter your name, your email, choose a password, your country, birth date, your diagnosis, or say that you don't have a diagnosis. Um, we will not share your information with anybody without your written signed consent. We will not solicit you. I'm not going to ask you for anything. These are your data. I just want you to be able to talk to your physicians about your state of health. So um, don't be shy or don't worry about us. We will not share any of your private data. 
Um, you get to choose whether or not you want to be alerted, sent a reminder weekly, monthly, or quarterly, or you can turn your reminders off. Um, like I said, I've been doing weekly just because I wanted to see, get to know my own, my, myself. I wanted to know what my symptoms were, what my score was, how it bounced around, how convenient or inconvenient it is. Um, I probably haven't done it in a week or two. So, you know, just um, the most important part is probably to do it when, before you see your physician. Um, I put a little few pros and cons here. Um, I said the people who should do it quarterly are the people who are generally stable. They're not making a lot of changes. They're doing well. Parkinson's is kind of happening in the background of their life. Um, it's not something that requires a lot of attention from them. And for their own reasons, they just would prefer to be reminded less often. Um, people who especially get frustrated by apps and phone you know, set it to quarterly, four times a year, probably about five minutes, four times a year is all that would take. Um, alternatively, you know, there are going to be people who really want to dial it in. They want to get to know themselves. They want to see if they can't decrease their score. They want to set goals. They want to go into their physicians with um, really clear lists about, about what their goals and motivations are, whatever. Um, for those of you who have already completed the pro PD at some point using the old data set, the online pro PD.org website, if you have ever given us a pro PD score in the past, uh, we have one opportunity. We have enough money in the, in the, from the donation to move the data over once, right? And so anybody who downloads this app now, like in the month of April. At the end of April, it's done, it's over. You will not be able to get your old scores. So anyone who downloads the app right now, when you download the app, there will be a point where you can say, please, um, yes, I would like to have my scores moved over. And so as soon as you say that you want to get your scores moved over and we get your confirmation that it is in fact you that is requesting it, then we can move your scores over and we're going to do it once at the end of this month. So please don't delay. And um, I don't know that it will be possible for you to retrieve your old scores after the end of April, 2023. I'm sorry about that. We just don't have uh, uh, enough resources to do a, make more than one data transfer request. And the only people I can transfer are the people who request it through the app. Um, so once you register, um, you will get an email or text that you have to confirm to say, yes, this is in fact me, and you are now active. You write your email in there once, you write your password in there once, and you click that box that says stay logged in, and you will never have to deal with registration again. That stay logged in box is really important, and then hit log in. And you're in. You have now registered and it is time to generate a report. So the first thing you do is you get new score. And the way the instructions read are to please rate the severity of your symptoms over the past seven days on average. The more severe and debilitating the symptom, the more you slide it to the right. If you are not having that symptom, slide it to the left. All symptoms must be scored in order to get a report. So you can't skip anything because we're going to add them all up to get a cumulative score. So after you score yourself with all of your symptoms, average over the last week, on average, how nauseous, how much has nausea gotten in my way this week? 18 out of 100. So you add up all your, the computer will add up all your scores. And I want to draw your attention to the comment box. This is really, really useful. Um, this is the place to say if you just fell down the stairs or you're going on vacation or you just retired or you're about to make a change to your medication or you're about to go vegan or you're about to start power or rock steady boxing. If you are about to make a change or are going through something unusual, this is a great place to document that and it will make it really easy for you and your providers in the future to kind of have an explanation for your good moment days and your bad days. 
So you'll the slider bar will turn each one of those bars into a score and generate some neat looking reports. So this is called a radar chart. And the way this works is the larger that blue bolus in the center of the circle, the more severe your symptoms. We want to shrink that blob. The smaller that blue blob in the center, the less symptomatic the person is. And the way we've done this is we've ordered it from most symptomatic to least. So this person's greatest symptoms are slowness, constipation, walking, freezing of gait, rising from a seated position. So we can, as both the patient and the clinician, kind of take a single glance and see which symptoms are most substantially contributing to the patient's overall burden of disease and start to come up with a strategy to improve that. Um, if you are going to barely ever do the generate a report, the most important times to generate a report are before you see the physician that is managing your Parkinson's disease. Whether it's your primary care provider, your general neurologist, your movement disorder specialist, this is a communication tool. And in addition to, to orienting you and your provider to which symptoms are most problematic for you and how do you compare to other people, um, I would argue that this is probably very helpful for chart notes. There is a section of all medical chart notes called the subjective section where physicians write what the patient's experience is, what are your complaints. And any patient who walks in with this one page of paper has just saved your provider a lot of charting. That section down at the bottom basically describes your subjective symptoms. And so now instead of your provider having to spend their time charting, they can just add this piece of paper to your chart notes and spend their time talking to you. So this report will save your provider time, improve their chart notes, and free up more space for you to actually have a conversation with them about getting your needs met. Uh, from the back end, we do have a way for healthcare providers and researchers to access your scores on the back end should you give your provider permission to see them. So we are working out those kinks right now, but what we are, what, uh, what I will promise you is nobody will see your scores without you giving that person permission to see your scores. So we want to create a scenario where you can join a eight week power class and everyone in the power class um, tracks their scores over the eight weeks and Becky Farley or whoever's teaching the class can track track symptom improvement over time and can pay attention to who's improving the most or the least, or does somebody need extra help? Or, um, and we as researchers can start to learn like, wow, this eight week program is especially good for balance and fatigue and sleep, but not very good at, you know, for, you know, these other three symptoms. So um, over time, we are hoping to create a way for um, providers, researchers, and patients to choose to share scores. Um, but right now, um, that's still in the works. So in summary, uh, the ProPD, these scores become more useful over time. The earlier you get your first score, the, that, that is the single most important score that first one, get it, get it early. And, and if you do nothing else, forget about it, just get that first score today. Um, for those who want to nitpick and pay attention and really kind of dial in their health, um, set it to weekly, play around for it a little bit, get to know yourself, how much do you bounce around um, and use it to track response to new meds, new diets, new supplements. Um, let me tell you, walk you through a little bit how to read a report. This is what a ProPD report looks like. I've blocked out the name so that you can't see, but here, um, this person was diagnosed one year ago. And you can see that in the top left, here is, you can kind of think of this figure as a report card. That line that runs through the bottom 
is the average rate of Parkinson's disease progression. So you can see that this person is much more symptomatic than the average person diagnosed one year ago. Um, they are actually more symptomatic than the average person diagnosed 15 years ago. So this is an example of if this person were my patient, I would call them in. I would say, hey, are we missing something? Do you have a comorbidity? Do you have something other than Parkinson's disease going on that could explain why you're so symptomatic? Are we missing something? Maybe it's not Parkinson's. Maybe it's Parkinson's plus something else. So, um, but this is, can be th thought of as a report card, this section where we answer the question, how does your score right now this week compare to other people diagnosed the same time as you? If your dot is above the line, it means you are worse than average. If your dot is below the line, it means you are better than average. This part of the um, report is uh, where we describe your symptoms by domain. And, um, you know, we are trying to figure out how best to organize this chart. About 10 really, really well informed, smart, experienced movement disorder doctors weighed in on helping me orient um, the positioning around this around this circle. But what we've done is the motor symptoms are kind of over in the upper right, uh, anxiety, depression, mood disorders, bottom right, uh, autonomic dysregulation is the bottom left. That's, you know, get orthostatic hypotension, sexual dysfunction, urinary dysfunction, um, cognitive over a kind of top left. And so what we've tried to do is just make it um, so that in a glance, probably especially your providers can kind of see which domain we need to spend a little more attention with. Looking at this person, it would look like their motor symptoms are actually fairly benign or very well controlled. Um, I'm much more concerned about the sleep. The, I mean, the without even meeting this person, um, you know, it looks like targeting sleep, might be, and constipation could drastically improve their quality of life. That's probably likely to improve their fatigue, um, daytime sleepiness. So um, anyway, symptoms by domain, that's how this one is set up. Um, down at the bottom, we just kind of list out the actual numbers so we, we can quantify how symptomatic a person is on a scale of zero to 100. 100 is as severe as I can imagine it. It is absolutely horrible and debilitating this past week. A score of zero means I don't have that problem at all. Um, this is that place, remember, I showed you there was a place to write comments or notes. Um, the comments that you made on the chart will become this note, trying to balance everything, work, daily activity, sleep isn't well, was this person's note. So um, when you take this scale the first time, that change over time figure in the top right is not going to be very exciting. That's just going to look like a dot. Over time, it will start to be very exciting as you start to see your change in score over time. Hopefully, if the score goes down or stays the same. Some of you, it will get worse. And I hope you can work with your providers to kind of correct that. But this is where this starts to be empowering and exciting when you can actually start to see that your score does not necessarily need to progress. I know that the, the word on the street is that Parkinson's disease is irreversible and progressive. And I'm here to tell you, I have thousands of patients with Parkinson's disease. I've been practicing more than 20 years and I remain more convinced than ever that Parkinson's disease does not necessarily need to be irreversible and progressive. I see people all the time whose quality of life and symptoms are improving over time. They still have stuff they need to navigate and deal with. They're not cured, but I, I do not believe that this disease need to be progressive. And the Pro-PD app will allow you to create graphs that show you how your score is changing over time. Obviously, there are people messing around and playing with it. This person took it, what, 15 times in one day, 17 times in one day. So, you know, um, 
<laughs> behind the scenes, we, we this is the downside to a subjective rating scale is patients can basically make up whatever they want. And most importantly, uh, we have a ton of data on what makes your symptoms better and worse. This is only the first step in a really, really long process. Um, as soon as you all start to use your scores and people start to understand their scores and we start to um, know how to use the ProPD as a currency, what you will see really quickly is there are a lot of things that you can do to improve your scores. And there are things you might be doing that are making them worse. So um, in the online Parkinson School series, in a lot of my interviews and uh, publications in the medical literature, I have been working to describe the variables associated with the best outcomes over time. We know the more fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and nuts and seeds and olive oil and coconut oil and, and water and er fresh herbs and spices that you eat, the better people do over time. We know that the more friends you have, the more money you make, the more sleep you get. People who take vitamin C and fish oil and glutathione and low dose lithium do better than people who don't. People who are sedentary, who don't exercise, who have financial stress, who are socially isolated and lonely, who eat fried foods, dairy, beef, chicken, soda, things from a can, um, they do worse. They progress faster. And so until now, we have not had a rating scale, a tool that actually allowed us to measure rate of progression in, in a sensitive way like this. And the ProPD is a tool that finally allows us to do that. Um, so that is where we are going. Uh, the MVP study is still going. Uh, MVP dash study.com is the website. Um, it takes about 60 to 90 minutes twice a year to answer questions. The more people who participate, the more we learn. And the more I can share with you and help you figure out the secret to success. As I already described, the idea behind the MVP study is really, really simple. We can see there is a tremendous amount of diversity in this disease this syndrome. It's not even a disease, it's a syndrome. There is so much diversity. Some of you are in really rough shape really early. Some of you are in excellent shape for decades. What I want to know is who are those folks who are in excellent shape decades after diagnosis and what are they doing differently than everybody else? And the ProPD rating scale outcome measure finally allows us to get answers to those questions. So please go today, download the Parkinson's symptom tracking app, generate your report, find out where you're starting from and see what you can do to improve your score over time. Good luck.